Hallo, moin moin, ladies and gentlemen, und Spector hier, <laughs> finally, with an um, over your head view. And if you have not recognized this model of a beautiful craftsmanship, well, yeah, you can't, it's my DIY headphone. And yeah, today um, I will just be discussing what I actually managed to achieve in the end and what I didn't achieve. And then in the subsequent video I will be discussing uh, a few things that I've learned, a few experimental steps that I tried. And yeah, what I will do if I make my next DIY headphone uh, or whether, when... Uh, yeah, so let's get right into it. Um, usually <laughs> I start my reviews right with packaging accessories. Well, the problem is this is self-built, so there ain't no packaging. And uh, accessory-wise, um, if we want to be generous and talk about a cable, I ordered this cheap open heart uh, cable the, to uh, the 3.5 millimeter uh, on both sides, which of course this is to 2.5. The cable is okay. Um, it's fine, like, but it doesn't come with the thing because it's self-built. So basically, you throw whatever cable you want onto it and it will be what you're getting if you get by yourself or build yourself a DIY headphone, right? But, um, more interestingly, probably will be the uh, topic of build. So, um, yeah, uh, how do I tackle this the best way? I think we start with the positive sides of my DIY project. Uh, first, you see these. This actually looks pretty good in real life. I'm not sure how well the camera is able to capture this, but this is, um, I think, like lightly colored bamboo, and it feels relatively smooth. It's not shiny in real life, but it has like a light, like it's, it's polished on the outside. That looks pretty neat. And it also does have some, uh, some, yeah, some feeling of wood to it. Let me just knock on it. That also doesn't sound bad. Like this is generally a pretty decent shell for uh, the pricing that I paid for it. And at the bottom, the 3.5 millimeter, three and a half millimeter connector here, that is fine. Like uh, I had to glue it in, um, so it could have been a bit better. Like I would prefer to be actually like, like, screwed in, but so far in the time I've been using this, uh, the glue just uh, kept the connector in place. Like first I expected this to be a bit of an issue, but it has been fine in the, I think it's almost been like a year or so since I have built this completely. Um, yeah. So that is also okay. Next positive thing, the actual hinges where this is mounted on, that is some thick metal. Like this feels well made. Like this feels like it has structural integrity and it, yeah, I don't have really problems with that. Uh, also the additional holes were cut in here, um, basically just for weight reduction. Like I don't think this does anything to the structure. Like this feels well made. Um, Unfortunately, oh, that's where the positive parts about the build end. Because when you can see this is kind of hi-fi man-ish in terms of headband. Well, uh, let's go to really ghetto part about this, like extremely ghetto to uh, get out of a max. Um, let me get this flipped a bit around so you can see that better. Well, you see that here, there's a bit of blue stitching at the side and it's kind of black and then we have this leather strap on top. Um, yeah, problem is um, how this inserts uh, or how the strap inserts in the, uh, the sliding mechanism here is not thick enough so I could fit my own leather strap in. It has to be this thin, uh, like just fabric strap that goes through there. And then I glued my real leather strap on top. So yes, this is real leather and it's actually of a pretty decent quality. Like it's slightly rough, but it feels soft and uh, does a good job in keeping the headphone on my head uh, comfort comfortably. But the issue is, as you can see, this is super ghetto. Like, I promise you, I couldn't get it better. Like, I could have filed this opening a bit bigger, but then the issue would have been on the inside of this, there's just not enough space to accompany the thick lever here. And I might have been able to send the lever a bit down, but I ain't have no sending paper for lever, and I'm not willing to find that. So it's just like, okay, let's get over shit together. Like, it's fine, like, it will hold there. And the glue I used here is a shoe glue. So that shit is just like, it really, it stays on here, all right? That is really uh, not indestructible, but it is been solidly on there. So that's really not great. And the other thing that is not so nice about the DIY headphone, this here is definitely number cheaper than Hi-Fi Man. Like this doesn't feel like as quality as Hi-Fi Man does. And also the uh, headband uh, metal here is a bit thinner and generally doesn't feel as well made as Hi-Fi Man headphones do. Um, but it's all right. Like it doesn't feel like it will break on you in time. It just doesn't feel good. And um, another issue that I have with this, this is uh, um, 
when you get this like pre-made headband from uh, wherever you want to order it, it's very, very clampy and you really need to bend it out in order to get it to a state where it's not squishing your head to mush. Um, that also wasn't great. Uh, what I did like though, well, uh, but Hi-Fi Man headphones do not have these things here. Um, that's actually metal. Like Hi-Fi Man uses plastic wear. This actually is metal. Also this bottom piece here is metal. So that's pretty nifty. Uh, but the mechanism itself isn't as good as Hi-Fi Man's. Like you notice they just copied it, but they didn't get the details right. Um, but I do like more about it in terms of build. Here you have uh, numbers, so you can actually see uh, to which level you have extended it. That's pretty nifty and I like this feature. And yeah, this is uh, how I have it basically on both sides in order for me to fit well. And um, well, what more to talk about build? Oh yeah, um, there's another ghetto thing. Uh, the screws you can see at the side unfortunately are not uh, self-securing. That means I need to tighten them over time. And you can see here, this one actually loosened a bit. And if I tighten them too much, you basically can't uh, twist the headphone cups. So <laughs> I need to find a medium balance between it stays in there for a few months and it doesn't prevent the headphone from, yeah, uh, like uh, tilting here in this direction because it can tilt, as you can see, but you need to find the right balance. Uh, issue is these holes are just too small and uh, the screws it came with, well, it came with not enough screws to mount them here and these were also not self-securing, so it, it kind of, eh, to sum the build up, it's okay, like, <laughs> it is it is a DIY project and you notice that. Oh, well, uh, one thing that you might not see on the inside, I have a 3D print, uh, printed faceplate here that has an angled driver. And um, yeah, that is okay. Like it's a decent 3D printing, a uh, decent 3D printer used here and it's 100% um, fill rate. So it's it's pretty solid. And um, yeah, that means I think the faceplate might be with the shell on the outside here, on the faceplate, the front plate here with the shell might be the best part. Like this on top is all ghetto. Like this is ghetto as hell. And then next, let's talk about comfort and fit. Um, yeah, so this does not swivel at all. Like it's like Hi-Fi Man, like it, you can see also the tolerances are not that great in this DIY project. Like it basically just swivels because the quality isn't so good. If the quality would be a bit better, it wouldn't swivel at all. But what it does, uh, tilt of like eh, 40 degrees or so, you can see it also goes a bit in this direction. That's pretty neat. So I'm pretty sure this will fit most hats um, because yeah, just it tilts a lot. Um, but the pads here, you need to find the right pads if you want to build yourself something like this. I have uh, velour pads that are relatively deep. Um, they, these are the pads that uh, you would also be, or be able to order with, for instance, the Zeus or the other Harmonic Dine headphones. And these are pretty decent pads. And um, yeah, with this, and as I mentioned before, unclamping with, like really going this or putting it on a block for some time so it does unclamp a bit. The comfort actually is pretty decent. It's not the greatest um, because, yeah, uh, still, like, even if you unclamp it, it still has a good amount of clamp, but it's okay. And um, I would like these still a bit less clampy, but now the issue is with the lever headband, I can't bend it as much as I could before I mounted this. So it's, it will always stay a bit clampy. So overall comfort is fine, but not great. Next, in terms of isolation, I mean, you can see I have a closed back design, right? So you might expect this to isolate well, uh, especially because I put a lot of foam in the back. Yeah, doesn't, no. Um, this is kind of okay isolating. Maybe on par with the Elysia, which wasn't great as well. I would say actually a bit worse than the Elysia in terms of isolation. So really it's not that good. And that means if uh, you're living on an, a street where actually in cars driving on the outside directly, you will hear this car through headphones, like on normal listening volume. So definitely um, I listen relatively quiet, uh, below 70 decibels usually. I hear the car easily on the outside. So <laughs> isolation is not good with these and you can definitely not wear them on the outside. Just not good enough. <laughs> and in the other direction, yeah, they also bleed sound to the outside. Like I have really, I have the, the whole back of this is basically foam filled. Like the entire thing behind the driver is foam filled. Still, like it bleeds sound to the outside. Like really, this is um, not a headphone I would describe as closed. It's more like semi-closed. Even for there is not really any vent at the back here. Next, uh, let's talk about durability. Um, yeah, um, I choose here a biocellulose driver at 50 millimeters in diameter. Um, according to the listening, it was for a Denon 9000, so that's a high-end headphone. And um, judging by looks, it definitely comes close to what the real Denon D9000 has. Um, but the thing that is really different here, I choose a 300 ohm version of this driver. And yeah, 
it says 300 ohms, but its actual uh, efficiency is still pretty good at that. So I would guess probably it's 300 ohms at like 110 decibels or 105 decibels, something like that. So that means if you have a dongle like the Hibi FC4, yeah, that does a pretty decent job in driving this headphone. Like it gets you about like 80 to 85% of what this can do with uh, just what the FC4 has. I'm, I'm not sure how this would scale in terms of uh, if you would get the, uh, the driver with less impedance of this version. If this sounds worse or better, I can't tell you. Um, I just can tell you, like, upping this to desktop power definitely makes it a bit better. It makes the bass a bit more controlled, gives a bit more details. Um, and that's why I said, like, on a Hibi FC4 with a 240 milliwatts, or approximately 240, it's fine, like 80 to 85%. And then um, now we need to talk about sound and... Um, yeah, so uh, I will have a second video where I talk about more what I learned, what I did and everything or on the second uh, last video of the series. Um, so here I will just show you, let, 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 let's close our eyes for a moment. Let's, let's just imagine how a nice measuring headphone looks like, like maybe something like this Andara, you know, with a nice space extension and good, uh, good peak at 3K and then with a nice natural tonality after that, some extension past 10K and now we slowly open our eyes. And we see this shit. What the fuck is that? So um, the red line you're seeing now is what I ended up just tuning by ear. That means I didn't have any rig. I just changed pads. I changed um, the filling at the back here, uh, like the foam at the back. Um, I had uh, a faceplate that had no holes at the front. I have a faceplate that has holes at the front. And I tried to uh, plug these close as well to see what difference it makes. And I angled the driver a bit with the 3D printed plate. But yeah, this is just tuned by ear. This is the best I could get. Like we, it's, it was very difficult to get it to somewhat sound right. And that means um, this shit needs a Q. Like really, you can't live without equalizer of this one. It's really, it's not good enough. Like, trust me when I say, um, this doesn't sound as bad as it measures, but it also doesn't sound nearly, nearly acceptable to my ears. So um, I EQ'd it and uh, my entire review here will be based on the EQ results that I will show you now. This is what I EQ'd it to and you can see there's a huge ass bass shelf um, and yeah, still a few dips that are weird. Uh, unfortunately, these dips that you can see here, wait, uh, let me just open the measurement for my review, uh, for my assessment here as well. So, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry for the delay. I just had to open it uh, to also look at the graph. Um, the dip at uh, 500 Hertz, that is unfortunately directly with the driver. Like I can't EQ this out. I can try as hard as I want. The dip at 500 Hertz is always there. That really is not removable. And the other uh, weird quirk that this has, um, you can see the slight, uh, let's say awkward pinna gain between one and 3K is really difficult to EQ out. Um, like the, the artifact at like 2K or 2.2K, something like that. I can't EQ this out at all, like this is always there. Um, as is the dip at like 5 k that's also always there the case, like it's, I can't EQ this out, it just doesn't work. And um, the next awkward thing that we see if you just look at the graph, um, you see the dip at like 9k. Well, um, yeah, there is a dip, but it's not as strongly pronounced as this graph might indicate. Uh, it's really one of those things on my actual head, there is information at this area. It's just subdued and not as much as you would want it. And that means with the um, actually has a good amount of energy past 10k, that means it sounds awkward overall. Like it has an, let me, let me take time before back, this has a kind of woody, like plasticky characteristic to it. And yeah, even EQ can't remove this because it just doesn't do that. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go into the details. Yeah, as, as, as you can see in the graph and also as my ear clearly indicates, there's information past 10k. Um, a good amount even than that, and it is not like really good planars or electrostatic headphones in that. But there's a really good amount of energy here, and that means you do have a nice overall detail. Um, special assist is well pronounced, and the weird thing is it overall sounds still a bit warm, but it has this like splash and sizzle on top. Um, it's not like the, the Night, uh, Nighthawk or Night Owl. These definitely are still warmer leaning, but it has some of these characteristics as well, where it's like, it sounds warm and soft, but still like crisp and detailed on top. It just lacks the attack that um, you would have with a planar most of the time, or with really good dynamic drivers that are also better tuned. But yeah, so um, good amount of energy past 10K, um, detailed, definitely present. It's just, <laughs> 
even with the EQ that I have applied here, um, yeah, so what I ended up with is now more V-shaped um, signature, right? But you need the additional energy, trust me. Like additional energy at like 6K, you need this. Like uh, with the amount of base shelf that I have below, the peak at 6K, um, I tried to reduce a bit or I didn't EQ it up as much. Unfortunately, this just doesn't work with the base shelf that my uh, headphone has here. It really would then come off overall as a bit muddy and muted. So I need the additional energy at 6K which makes this van a bit more V-shaped overall, uh, but it's not bad. And that also means there isn't good, it's not, it's not great, but there's a decent attack on goodish attack on uh, notes uh, on e-guitars. These are fine. Um, yeah, there is also no overly pronounced S and F, like there's no peak at 8K. And uh, that means this generally comes off as way better than for instance the Zeus Elite, which really has a strong peak at 8K. Can't recommend it, but this thing does not have that, and it comes off as a bit more natural in this regard. Um, but yeah, then after that, uh, I added also a bit more energy that probably would be considered neutral in the lower mids. But overall, it's fine. Like, it doesn't come off as wailed, it doesn't come off as too strong for me. Is, as I said, a bit more, more energy than you would want. Uh, it has a bit more energy than, for instance, the Sandara to my ear, um, but that is a completely different signature, so it's very difficult to, to compare them. But overall, yeah, it's a bit V-shaped. And yeah, um, yeah, when we go to the mids, and yeah, the upper mids, they definitely are a bit lacking. Like, you could you could say, like, they should be pronounced a bit more, but I couldn't really EQ them up that well, so that's how we are. Um, but overall, it's fine to me, like, they come off as clear enough without losing too much body and too much clarity. But definitely um, better tuned headphones do a way better job in this area. So my benchmark song um, uh, uh, from Never Fade Away from the Cyberpunk 2077 soundtrack was still, I would say, nicely defined. Um, slightly recessed in the vocal department, of course, but nicely enough defined. And yeah, uh, that brings me to the mids and yeah, I tried to get the mids as flat as possible and you can see it by graph here. This is the best I could get them. So there is a um, dip at like 500 hertz and that of course leads to some weirdness in the vocal department, like they just don't sound as natural as they could. And it also means that uh, some of growls come off as a bit subdued. Like if you really like metal, um, dip at this region, not really recommended. That makes the growls come off as just like a bit lost in the mix. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I can't say much positive about the mids. Like, they are okay, but not more and not less. Um, but now let's, let's, ladies and gentlemen, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how I can describe your space shelf sounds. Because whatever you see here doesn't do it justice. Like, this space shelf is the shit. Like, really, I'm <laughs> not always straight. I mean, I tell you, this is probably the most bassy headphone that I have heard where the bass did not drown out the entire mids. Like with the EQ profile that I have, the, the really cool thing is the dip at 500 hertz, this kind of helps to separate the bass a bit from the rest of the frequency response. So we have this huge bass shelf of, wait, let me, let me count the decibels. So it is at uh, 77 decibels and goes all the way to 88 decibels in the sub bass. Yeah, that is a lot of bass shell for an over your headphone, especially considering that this has a biocellulose driver. And really, this shit, it's, it's hammering. Like, really, I, I don't know how to describe it, like, but if the bass hits, it hits. And it hits really hard. Like, it's one of those things. Yeah, it's not the most technical bass. Like, it's still okay overall. Like, you have still a DK that's fine enough. But definitely, the Elysia, for instance, does beat this in terms of bass quality. But the heft this headphone has, uh, it's just unbelievable. And really, whenever I listen to a song that has a bit bass, and when the bass note hits, like it makes me giggle because it's it's so absurd the amount of bass you have. It's just mm, don't know how to describe it. Like really, the, the graph doesn't do it all the justice. Um, Although keep in mind, uh, uh, or maybe why this actually is working here, the original uh, e profile that this came with, or how the driver works by itself, it has a bass shelf like this. The only thing that I did, I added more energy below 70 hertz, because there would have been a light dip, and I was like, okay, let's still add 3 decibels on top. And the nice thing was, the EQ actually worked really well here, like really, I just added a slope um, to below 60 hertz, and that, that was it, like, that's the result that you see here in the graph, like, really, there was not much issue in EQing the bass up at all, and that means overall, like, this bass is really, 
it, it slaps. Like really, it slaps the shit out of you. And um, the sub bass quality might not be the greatest. Um, with some texture in Interstellar's Mountains, which is my benchmark track overall, um, there's a bass drop uh, that goes even lower from like 2 minutes 10 to 2 minutes 16. This manages like 2 minutes 15. And if you up the volume a bit, like you can hear in light time at 2 minutes 16. So it's not the greatest quality. Um, other EMs definitely did better than this over here. But overall, this shit is, it, it's pretty damn good. And um, yeah, bass really is the star of the show here, like without any question. And then let's talk, yeah, uh, sound stage laying with imaging. And yeah, what should I say? Uh, probably that the, uh, the pin again here is a bit softer and a bit uh, pushed back means that you do have a pretty decent stage with height, with depth, and uh, is a bit track sensitive in that I noted. But overall, I would say in like 50% of my tracks, really good sound stage, really good imaging there. Yeah, and then in the other 50%, I would say it's it's all right. Like could be a bit better, but I have not much to complain here. Layering, I mean. It's, it's a headphone, right? It's not an IEM like most of the time. It's unfortunately the free blobs. Um, some better mi mixed jazz tracks um, work with five layers, but it's really occasionally like it's more of it's like three layers and nothing else. And yeah, imaging um, mostly is pretty good, but again, like it depends. Like if you have unfortunately the wrong track, it does somewhat mush things together there. And yeah, luckily in games, I didn't notice too much of this problem, but definitely in some jazz tracks, I was like, oh, it's pretty good. And then the next one had a bit more A guitars, was a bit chopper, I was like, hmm, that's where we like mush together in one place. It could have been better. And then uh, last but not least, we come to the verdict, just how on the sound quality verdict or on the verdict of this headphone. Yeah, separation, dynamics, and coherence. Uh, yeah. Mm. I think best thing is again we start with timbre. Like yeah, this is my DIY project. It is not the most natural timbre overall. Um, actually, oh, I just read my own notes. I said it sounds slightly cottony, like slightly like softer than you would want things to be. And uh, woody, woody, probably also a bit or oh, good description here. And that means it's not the greatest timbering headphone out there, but it's all right. Like just looking at the graph, you would expect it to sound worse than it actually does. Um, coherence, though, well, is as you would expect from a single dynamic driver, it's pretty damn good. And um, yeah, I didn't have too many complaints if I listened to the whole spectrum. Like a piano, for instance, came off as overall relatively coherent, and I didn't feel like the mids or the treble was too far off of what I would expect. And yeah, dynamics, um, yeah, these are pretty good. Like, I didn't have complaints with the dynamics overall. Uh, I think BIOS, BIOS LOS drivers generally tend to be a bit more dynamic. In over your headphones and in ears, I've not experienced a single example where I was like, that is really good biocellulose. This one, though, is pretty dynamic overall and it comes off as pretty hard hitting as well. And it brings me to the verdict. Um, so, how well does my DIY headphone sound? Um, yeah, without EQ, it's garbage. Like, <laughs> what should I say? It's, it's, it's garbage. You can see how it measures. Uh, it doesn't sound as bad as it measures. But with EQ, check this graph out, it's pretty good. And I actually like what I created here. Like really, it, it is bassy to a point where really every time I listen to a song that has a good bass drop, it makes me really, it makes me giggle. It's it, it's so fun. It's so over the top. It's just, boy, like it, it's fun to listen to. And uh, the nice thing is the technicalities also are not lacking. I'm not sure if this is the same driver as the Dino on D9000. Like it looks very similar, but I can't prove it because I don't have the Dino on D9000 here. But generally, even if I would listen to this with my EQ profile um, and just you ask me how, how technical is it, I would put it in 350 to 500 ish bracket. Um, so it is already pretty up there in terms of technicalities. Uh, of course, there's room improvement on top a bit, but again, we are well in the realm of diminishing returns here. And that means, yeah, this shit will give you most of what you will ever be able to listen to. So it is definitely a decent result in the end, and I do like to listen to it. It's just very specific. Like, this is a bit more V-shaped. It's not as natural, a lightly woody sounding or cottony. So it doesn't work for all genres. Like, I still prefer uh, for jazz, definitely the Elysia with EQ single or, 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 uh, or the Sandara, like, easily beat this. But if you have something that is more, let's say metal, or you listen to something that's a bit more like pop music-ish, or even something of this uh, more Japanese fusion genres that have like a bit more guitar, a bit more bass, this does really well with my DIY project. And um, yeah, 
I think that uh, sums up my review. Like, for some things, sounds really good, and for other things, not so much. But you need a queue. And that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, if you have criticisms, if you have recommendations, uh, yeah, please leave a comment. And with this, non-spector.